When you get your outline, is this thing working? It seems to be. When you get your outline, you will see that this is lesson four. Okay? Um, and there's a worksheet that goes with it. I'll give you that worksheet. And you'll probably also do lesson two today. Okay? Although it is a short day, so maybe not. Maybe we'll just do lesson four and call it even. All right? But we'll see how we go. So vernier calipers, you can see they look like a very um, complicated instrument. And what I will probably do is once you have your uh, worksheet, I'll probably run downstairs and seal some vernier calipers from uh, Mr. Wimmer. And I'll bring them back up so you can actually see what they look like in real life. Um, of course, uh, it being 2016, vernier calipers don't necessarily look like this anymore. They are often digital now, which means you don't actually have any have to have any skill to use them. You just slide it and it works. Now, of course, as you are all well aware, digital things can sometimes not read correctly. If the batteries are wrong or something weird has happened, then you're in trouble. And the problem with the digital vernier caliper is should you need to measure something with it and you don't have the battery, you're screwed because they don't have all these measurements on them to actually be able to be used. Analog doesn't ever break down. This tool will work until the end of time. Unfortunately, we don't value analog things. We only value digital things because we just do. Even money has gone digital. In your guys' lifetime, Bitcoin will be how you pay for everything, which is weird. I hope not but it will happen. If you don't know what Bitcoin is, ask somebody who spends a lot of time in front of a computer. Do any of you know what Bitcoin is? Good. Do you, any of you not know what Bitcoin is? Huh, interesting. Okay. Well, as a good teacher to me once said, go look it up. All right. So right here you have the Vernier Caliper. There are seven parts to it. This is not incredibly important, what these seven parts are. You need not memorize them, but I'm going to tell you what they all are. One, right down here, are the outer jaws. And they are used to measure outer diameters. So you would put something in here and clamp the jaws onto it. And it would measure the diameter from the outside to the outside. They are particularly useful for plumbers and uh, electricians and uh, machinists who have to take small like wire and stuff. That goes there. Two, up top here, is the inner. Oops. The inner jaws. And those bad boys, duh, measure the inner diameter, but they work differently. Out here... The pipe, you have a cylinder, right? It goes on top of the jaws, and the jaws slide out to meet it. Is everybody cool with that? Again, I'm an idiot. I forgot to bring up a set to show you how it works. Uh, number three is the other measuring device on here. This slides like a trombone, and it is a depth gauge. And you can use that like if you've got to drill a hole into something. That, you can slide in and out, and that will measure how deep the hole's got to go. Everyone cool with that? They're really handy tools. They're pretty important in the, uh, the world um, of construction. Now, number four, and it's hard to read on here, is right here. Number four is the uh, fixed fixed 
SI scale. And number five is the fixed imperial scale. A good set of vernier calipers will do both. You read them the same way. If you're in the United States or you're doing construction in the imperial scale, you use the top line. If you're using metric, you use the bottom line. And then seven and eight are also scales. Or sorry, six and seven. Six is the SI, what we call vernier scale. And I'm going to show you what that means in a second. And seven is the imperial vernier scale. Named after the dude that invented them, of course. All right. Now, all of that is incredibly useless to you until you actually have to read one. Now, other than Kobe, Kobe, have you ever used an analog one or only a digital one? So you know how to do this, kind of. Okay. Other than Kobe, many of you have probably never used one of these things. It's a little bit tricky. So, read this for a second. Try to digest it. Try to compare it to the labels we just had. Oh, sorry, the moving scale is the vernier scale. Because it slides up and down the, the, uh, the, the uh, instrument. So everyone's read that, yeah? Everyone's cool? Okay, so let's look back at the, the instrument here. Now you can see, if I zoom in, if I zoom in fairly heavily, and it's, it's actually helpful to zoom this uh, right in. If I zoom in, you will notice that the vernier scale right here has a line that starts at zero. Does everyone see that? Now when you read on your sheet, it says check the first line on the moving scale. Check the first what? Line. Line. Is this a line on the scale? No. 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 You do not use the edge of the scale. You use the first line. Does everybody see that? That is the number one mistake you are all going to make. You are going to use the edge of the scale. You don't. We don't start counting just a little bit below zero. We start counting at what? Zero. zero. So we start measuring at what? Zero. 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 Now, the rest of that line says that point line will point to a place on the fixed scale. See? It points to that place on the fixed scale. Does everyone see that? And also up here, yes? Yep. So you can see quite plainly that this zero points to just before 2.5, doesn't it? Yeah. Everybody agree? Yeah. It's hard to see on your sheet, but zoomed in, you can quite plainly see it doesn't quite make 2.5, does it? No. If it doesn't make 2.5, as you can see when you read this, that gives you the first part of the measurement. So the first part of this measurement is 2.4. Yes? Because the zero doesn't make it to 2.5. Is everybody with me on that? Yeah. Now look on the imperial scale. Zero almost gets to one. Does it get to one? No. No. So it's one click before one. Now you can see in the imperial scale, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16. It's split into 16ths, isn't it? Yeah. So the first digit on the imperial scale is 15 sixteenths. Is everyone okay with that in this example? Everyone is good? All right, now, read the next section. Find the first line on the moving scale which aligns best with a line on the fixed scale. 
Now this is where it gets weird. See how there's all these little lines on here? On the moving scale, the Bernier scale? One of those lines is going to line up perfectly with one of the lines on the fixed scale. And it's right here on ours. Okay? The six. Is everyone cool with that? That tells you the rest of your measurement. And I'm going to show you what I mean on the, big, uh, the bigger ones that are easier for you guys to read. Everyone understand? So we started here at 2.5, and then we're going to add where we get to. Everybody understand? So it's 2.5 plus something. And on the imperial scale, it's 15 sixteenths plus whatever fraction this gives us. Is everyone cool? So again, we have to know how to add fractions. Is everybody good? All right. So now let's, I'm going to shrink this back down, and we're going to use your actual sheet right now because it's easier to um, deal with. It has been enlarged to show. Now, so this one, again, it's quite simplified, yes? So when we are measuring on this blue one, will we use this line or zero? Zero. We will use zero because that's what we count at. So let's look at that. What is the first digit that we have? So remember, we are looking at what is the last number that our zero line got past. Nine. So this is going to be nine something. Does everyone understand that? Everyone's cool? Okay. Now, what would you say is the number that lines up best? Five. Five lines up right there, correct? Yep. And since it is 0.1 millimeters, one decimal place, this measures... 9.5 millimeters. Is everybody good? Does everyone see how it works? Metric is easy because it's decimals. Okay, now let's look at the next one. I got this weird flattened pipe thing. How wide is it? So again, I use my zero to get the last whole number that it passes. What is it? 19. And what lines up? The five. the 5 again. And since it's 0.1, it's 19.5 millimeters. Is everybody okay with that? Do you think? Yeah. Gerard? Um, sorry, I'm just confused for the first one. Wouldn't the 9 also be the decimal? No, because this is measuring millimeters, whole numbers. It would be a decimal if I wanted meters, but this is measuring whole millimeters. This is measuring tenths of a millimeter. Oh. Cool? Everybody good? It's a good question. Yeah? All right. Now, if I'm not mistaken, your guys' next page should have eight of these on it. Yeah. Okay. Please attempt them. They are all metric. Okay? I'm going to show you how to do an imperial one in a moment. Okay? But I want you to get good with the metric ones first because reading it is the same for both. You follow the same rules to read it. It's what you do with those readings that are different for imperial and metric. Everyone okay? So you guys go ahead with that while I find us uh, some imperial ones to check. All right? Okay. Uh, would anyone like to volunteer an answer to this guy? Gemrod. 23.8. 23 23.8. Perfectly acceptable. And see, this is one of those things, if you get it, you get it, right? Some of you may have 0. 0.7 or 0. 0.9, but that's cool. What about this one? Michaela. 17.2. Oh, look at you. Brilliant. Next one. Kobe. 5.4. Absolutely. This one. Oh, it's little. Zero Joel. Point six. 0.6. Excellent. This one. This is a sneaky one. Gerard. It's supposed to be 11. 
I'm sorry, what? Is it supposed to be 11? No, because it lines up exactly at 10, so it is indeed 10. 10. And this one? 8.6. And this one? 10.9. 10 .9. And this one? 3.3. Now, you can go and check this out if you wish. I don't care. But I want to show you. Everybody feel they're okay with that? I mean, I'm going to give you a worksheet on it. You're going to get a little more practice. There's nothing in the textbook about it. So, again, it's one of those things. It's, there's one maybe, maybe one question on the provincial about it. Um, but I do want to show you this. This is a, a, an imperial vernier caliper. And this one is the kind of the hardest. I, I shouldn't say that. There's two different ways to read them. So I want to show you this one. And then I didn't find a picture of the other kind. So I'm going to steal it from your review. Okay, I used to have uh, a review that had a whole bunch of Imperial Vernier calipers on it, but then I cut them all out because they stopped putting them on the exam. I haven't seen a Vernier caliper on the exam in, or a, a Imperial Vernier caliper on the exam in seven years. So you can take that in one of two ways. They've either stopped doing them or it's time to do one. You understand? So I'm going to show you both. So the first thing we're going to talk about is this one, because this is about the hardest kind of vernier caliper to read. Okay? So nothing changes at the beginning. We start with what? The edge or the zero? zero? We start with the zero. Lovely. And you can see quite plainly the zero, one, two, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Now this I told you is an imperial vernier caliper, and yet they've put it into decimals. Does everyone see that? Yeah. It's sneaky. All right. But then look what they did to each decimal. What did they do to each tenth of a decimal point? Divided it into four. One, two, three, four. See what I'm doing? See what I'm saying? There's decimals and fractions involved here. I know. I make that face too, Michaela. These are horrible. Everybody with me? So now the first part doesn't change. We know we've got the one covered, right? So we know this is at least one inch. Everyone agree? Just look. You don't need to write this down. Now, this zero goes to where? One, two. Does it get to three quarters? No. No, it gets to two quarters. Agreed? Yeah. Oh, <laughs> Where's the undo? Undo cut. Whew, that was close. All right. Where does this zero get to? It gets to a half. Does it get to three quarters? No. No, it doesn't. Everyone cool with that? All right. Now, this is weird. That is a half, right? Half the way between 0.9 and point and, 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 and 2. Yeah? So what is that? These are tenths, but they've been divided into four chunks, yeah? So what's a tenth divided by four? Pardon? One tenth divided by four. One tenth times one fourth is what? If you need to go to your calculator, you can go to your calculator. One fortieth, yeah? Right? Right? Yes. Okay. So, but this is in decimals, isn't it? So I need that as a decimal, yeah? Yep. What is that? How do you find that? Mm -hmm. And there's how many of them? No, no, no. One, two of those 40ths, yes? Okay. So this is telling me I've got one. 
but I've added two fortieths, which is one twentieth. Everyone cool with that? I've added one twentieth. Now, since they've gone and made this into decimals for us, what does that one twentieth have to be? A decimal, yeah? yeah. Which is 0 0.05. Everyone cool? Yeah. So we've got one plus 0 0.05. Or sorry, one plus 0.9, because we got to 0.9, plus 0 0.05, right? Now what lines up here? The 10, right? Everyone cool with that? Okay, so I'm gonna need to add a third digit, aren't I? Right? So since it's 10 and it lines up at four, five, uh, sorry, the 10 lines up here, does this have anything to do with it? No. No. That just tells us where we stop down here, correct? Yeah. Right? And this is dividing each of these into how many pieces? Do you understand what I'm asking? What does the moving scale divide each of these into? Four. Four? Look at the moving scale. How big is it? The moving scales in fifths. The moving scale is in fifths. The moving scale is chopped into how many chunks? Five, 10, 15, 20, 25. So the moving scale is chopped into how many chunks? 25, right? Oh. Everyone cool? Right? So this is 1 25th of an inch, isn't it? So what lines up? Ten twenty-fifths of an inch, which is, I would do that as a decimal, and I would get what? Out come the calculators. No, that's 25 divided by 10, Joel. It's 2.5. Ten twenty-fifths. Okay. I just did the wrong vernier caliper. I did the fraction vernier caliper. This is the decimal vernier caliper. Sorry. Sorry. This one's actually easier, Nadja. All I do is I add a one at the end. Yeah. Sorry. Sorry, 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 sorry. Since the 10 lines up, that's all we add. So it's 1 plus 0.9 plus 0.05 plus 0.01. So it's 1.96. I screwed up. I apologize. You'll see how I screwed up when I show you the next one. Is everyone okay with that? I am going to, because I screwed up. Everyone's okay at one? Yeah. Yes, Gerard? Sorry, you're going through. Um, but I, I was just confused about the point one. I'm getting to that. Is everyone okay with one? I didn't screw that part up. I did that part right. Is everyone okay with point nine? I didn't screw that part up. I did that part right. Is everybody okay with point zero five? I didn't screw that part up. Okay. The zero, right, is just past half, right? So that is, each of these is 1 40th, right? And it's just past 2 40ths. 2 40ths is 1 20th, 
which is 0 0.05. Is everyone okay to there? Okay. Now, I screwed up because this isn't in fractions. This just gives me my last number. So I just add whatever it is. If it was here, what would I add? 15, 20, 25 to this. It would be 0.15 or 0.20 or 0.25. Everyone cool? But all I'm adding is 0.1. So the one gets added to here. So 1.956. Everyone okay? Now, if it was 25, it would be 9, 5, plus 25 would be uh, 1.975. Everyone okay? Now, wait a minute. Let me keep talking. This is the even Steven for hardness. And like I say, I've never seen this actually show up on the provincial yet. So already I can tell some of you are stressed about it. You need not be. Your first, Supri. What? For the 15. So oh, yeah, yeah. No, 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 no. Yeah, you just add whatever the digit that lines up is. This would be, if it was 15, it would be 0.95. And then you'd add 1 and 5. So it would be 965. Okay? Now, you're already stressing because I screwed it up. I feel bad because I was thinking the fraction one. The fraction one is the harder one. All you do, guys, is you add this. So if it was 5, you would be adding 0, 5. So it would be 1.905 1 1 1.955. Okay? Yes. Not 9.5. Okay, and when you see the fraction one, you'll see why what where my brain went wrong, because the fraction one actually cares about here. Again, if you can't do it, it means absolutely nothing. Okay, all that matters is you can read the line, because like I said, I've never seen an imperial one on the provincial. Okay, all right. The point of the lesson is that you understand, you slide, and then you use the fractions. That's all you need to take out of this. Can everybody do that? Okay, now, don't uh, just watch this again on the next one. Okay, I'm gonna zoom in so it's easier to see. So this one is not in decimals, is it? How do you know? One, two, three, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. You can see that this one is all in fractions, yes? Okay. So the big numbers are divided into what? Sixteenths, right? And the little numbers are divided into what? No. Eighths. So each of these covers an eighth of a sixteenth. Do you understand what I'm saying? Okay, so to read this guy, we use the zero. One, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Do I get the seven sixteenths? No. Everyone agrees that we are not at seven sixteenths there, are we? What is the last sixteenth that we passed? Six. Six. So we're at one and six sixteenths, which is, of course, three eighths, yes? Everyone's okay with that? Now, what lines up? Six. Six, right? Everyone cool with that? Okay. So that means we got to add that is six eighths of a sixteenth. Okay. So one sixteenth times six. Eighths. Is everyone cool? 
and that is 16 times 8 is, I can't do that in my head because I'm all embarrassed because I screwed up the last one. 16 times 8 is 128, yeah? So this is 6, 128. Is everyone cool? Everyone's okay with that? Yeah. So I'm at 1 and 6 sixteenths plus how much more? 6, 128. 6, 128. And then I got to add. Everyone cool? That's what was messing me up on the one that was already in decimals. Because this one, you just use the fractions. This matters. It doesn't give you a decimal. It gives you a fraction of a fraction. Everyone see? Whereas this one, I had to convert fractions to decimals and then back. And I was thinking that this was giving me a 25th of, of each of these, which it does not. This one is the last version I saw on a provincial. It's this. And since we only care about the provincial, we're never going to use a Vernier caliper. I don't want to spend a lot of time on it. Everyone okay? The metric one is the only one that really matters. Gerard. So I understand this, why we get the 6 to 8, but um, what is it? It's a 6 8. I'm sorry. It's a 16. 6 eighths of a 16th. Because these are sixteenth of an inch. So we go by the, the lowest. And this is dividing each of those into fractions. So this lines up at six eighths of a sixteenth. So that's why I did one sixteenth times six eighths. Okay. Okay? And then I would add this and find a common denominator and do all that. Everybody okay? This is the one that you need to be able to do. This was just to show you. This is not important. So don't stress. Even though some of you are. I shouldn't have showed it to you first. And I shouldn't have screwed it up. But I did. It happens. Because I was thinking ahead to this guy. Where you do have to split it up. And do double conversions. Everybody okay? Alright. So let's get back to our notes. Which you're all done now, yeah? Oh, I'm still zoomed in at giant. So everyone could read the metric one. That's the one that really matters because, of course, we live in Canada. Everyone can read it. That's no good. Everyone can read a metric vernier caliper, yes? That's all that matters. All right, now. Let us move on to converting within systems. So I'm going to give you two worksheets to do tonight. Do you have to memorize this? No. No, you do not need to memorize this. Why? Sign a data booklet. You're going to get a data booklet. Okay? Now, please notice, remember on the very first sheet, when we were talking about meters, millimeters, centimeters, and kilometers, yeah. and we, we recognize that it goes up in chunks of 10, but we also recognize that meters to centimeters goes from 1 to 100. So we missed the 10 step, didn't we? Yeah. Right? And meters to kilometers goes from 1 to 1,000. So we missed the 10 and the 100 step, didn't we? Those measurements exist. We just don't use them very much. But you're responsible to know them. Understand? Now they are not given to you in any of your data booklets. Okay? So I'm going to give them to you right now. So on this side over here, we're going to do the less than one meter. Okay, so what are the measurements down there? What are the measurement that we, the two that we use that are less than one meter all the time? We use centimeters and millimeters, right? We're missing one. Does anybody know what it is? Decimeter. Decimeter. That's what's missing. We don't use them in Canada almost at all. They do use them in Europe. Hannes has informed us they do not use them in South Africa. But they do use them in Europe. So less than a meter, it goes, the base, which is a meter, is where we start from, yes? 
And we know each step is how much? 10. 10, right? A multiplication or a division of 10, yes? So the next one down is the deci. Decimal, one-tenth. Decimeter, one-tenth. Okay? Everybody cool? And then what's next? Centi. Centimeter, one one-hundredth. Cent. And milli, one, not million. Everybody wants to say million. It's mille from French. M-I-L-L-E. A thousand. Okay? Everybody with me? Now, I'm going to do something a little weird here. Watch. If I start with a thousand millimeters, how many centimeters is that? 100, which is how many decimeters? Which is how many meters? One. What happened to the decimal place as I went up these, this imaginary staircase? It moved one place. It moved one place in what direction? Left, because the numbers are getting small, smaller, because the distances are getting bigger. Does everyone understand that? So for every step up, we move the decimal one step left because the number is getting smaller. Everybody cool? Yep. So that's if it's just basic. What then is going to happen if I have uh, 1,238 millimeters? What's that in centimeters? 123.8. What's that in decimeters? 12.38. What is that in meters? 1.238. Is everyone cool with that? Yes. Everyone is? Everyone's comfortable with less than? Yes. Kobe. How big is one decimeter? A decimeter is 10 centimeters. So uh, I've got my ruler here somewhere. Where did it go? It's the metric version of a foot. Okay, everybody cool? All right, now, obviously if these are the less thans, what are we gonna put over here? Greater. The greater thans. Now, so we're gonna be going up this time. Now remember, this staircase continues because it's metric, right? So we were at the base, which was a meter. So now we're gonna come back to here and we've got our base, which is meters. Now we're gonna go up. Now remember, as we go up, the decimal place will keep moving to the left, right? Right? Okay. So the next one is a deca, not deci, deca, like decade. How long is a decade? Ten. Ten. Ten years. So this is a deca meter. So how many meters is it? Ten. Ten. Everybody cool? All right. The next one up is a hecto. Meter. Now, hecto we actually do use, but nobody knows what it is. Okay? How many of you in the summer, when you watch the news and you hear that all of BC is on fire and you hear it's 7,000 hectares? Have you heard that saying, that wording? A hectare is this square. Don't draw this, I'm just giving you some real life uh, use. A hectare is this, 100 meters by 100 meters. That's a hectare. Whoa. So it is 10,000 square meters. That's what a hectare is. We use it to measure land area. Everyone cool? That's, when, that's where the term hectare comes from. Because it's, it's a square hectometer. So there's our 10, there's our 100. What's the next one? 1,000 kilo. And we stop there. Okay? Now there are more. Right? But we don't use them. Now, as I said, we continue our multiplication methods. Yes? Or actually our division methods. Because as we go up, we divide. 
So if I start down here at a thousand, oh wait, I'm gonna do that below like I did on the other one. If I start at a thousand meters and I'm going up the stairs, where does the decimal move, left or right? Left, left as I go up the stairs. So deca meters, how many? 100. There's a hundred and we abbreviate that D-A-M. Damn. Okay. Not DM. DMs are decimeters. He then how many hectometers? Ten. Ten HMs. And then how many kilometers? One, One KM. Everybody cool? Yeah. Now, let's change it. If I have 1,238 meters, how many decameters is that? 123.8. How many hectos? 12.38. How many kilos? 1.238. Everybody cool? Yeah. Now you're smart kids. When I go up, I move the decimal place to make the numbers smaller, which is weird. When I go down, I move the decimal place right to make the numbers bigger. Everybody with me? Yeah. So here, if I have 1.238K and I don't want to know it in meters, I move the decimal place the other way. Those you have to know. Everyone okay with that? But it's real easy, because all it is is a decimal place per spot. And most of them, you actually know what they mean, right? Mm -hmm. Milli, centi, deci, they all make sense. Thousand, hundred, ten. That's decimals, cents, cents and a dollar. Milli's a little bit of a pain, because everyone wants to say million, unless you're in French class. And then going up, going up's a bit of a hassle, right? Deca, decade. Hecto, 100, H, Hecto, something like that, up to you. Everybody good? And then everything else you actually get on the sheet. Okay? So, this is very helpful to memorize. You don't need to because you can use what I'm about to show you for that as well. All right? The next thing we are going to talk about is conversion factors. All conversions in every course you take will work doing what I'm about to do. So if you're in chemistry and you're converting uh, um, cups or, or milliliters to uh, liters, this will work. Okay, if you're in physics and you're comparing meters to kilometers, this will work. It will also work, as you'll see tomorrow, if you've got to change meters to miles. Okay? Here's what you do. Conversions are done by multiplying fractions. Okay? And this is what you do. You have the number you start with and you multiply by the following fraction, okay? What you want over what you don't, okay? Does everybody understand what I'm saying? Now. 485 centimeters to meters. If you know the steps, that's real easy, right? It's two steps. We all know it's going to be 4.85, yeah? Because we all can do that. Converting within metric is easy because it's just moving the decimal. Okay? But let's run it through our fraction to show you how it works. Because if you run the easy ones through the fraction, it makes the harder ones through the fraction understandable. All right? So what am I starting with? 485 centimeters. So that's my start. Now I need to multiply that by a fraction. What do I want? You want meters. meters. So I look on my chart and I see one meter is 100 centimeters and I want meters. So meters goes on the top. One meter. And what do I, what is it I don't want? I don't want 100 centimeters, correct? Yeah. Now, Please look at that. What is 485 really in math class? It's 485 over 1, isn't it? Yeah. So really what I have here is this fraction, yes? 
Now, I have centimeters on top, centimeters on the bottom. What do I get to do? Switch. Switch? Yeah. When I have the same thing on top of a fraction, same thing on the bottom of a fraction, what do I get to do, Noah? Cross multiply. Cancel, yeah. right? Because a centimeter divided by a centimeter is one, right? Yeah. So the centimeters are gone, cool? Yeah. I got a one up top, I got a one on the bottom. What do I get to do? Yeah. Cancel, it's gone. So what's left? I got 485 over what? 100. 100. Which, when we do it on our calculator, we already knew it was 4.85 because we know the stair method. But as you can see, it works. Everybody cool? Yeah. That's metric. It's the easy one, right? So now let's do a slightly more difficult one, imperial. I need 15 yards to feet. Right? So what do I start with? Oh, sorry, let's do number two. Duh. One, two, three, four. Math teacher. Let's do two. 57 inches to feet. So what do I start with? 57. What do I want? Feet. So one foot is 12 what? 12 inches, right? You look on your chart. What's the same? I can get rid of the inches. I can get rid of the one. So what am I left with? 57 over 12. Right? Now, how many 12s go into 57? Four. So it's four feet, and how many are left over? Nine inches. Everybody cool? Is four feet nine inches 4.9 feet? No. What is it? What? Yeah, it's four and nine twelfths of the next foot, isn't it? And nine twelfths is three quarters. So it's 4.75 feet. Does everybody see how that works? They love to do that on the provincial exam. You'll get four foot nine. And you'll be like, yeah, I got it. And then you'll look at your multiple choice answers and it won't be there. But 4.75 will be. Picking up what I'm putting down? Yeah. So keep your eye on that. All right, now let's do this one. 15 yards to feet. What am I starting with? 15 yards. What do I want? Feet. So three feet is one yard. What cancels? Yard, yard, one on the bottom. Do I care about the one on the bottom? No. No, I'm always canceling the one and what's left? 15 times three, which is 45 feet. Is everyone cool with in its own system? Yeah. Okay, so 136 what? What does the one apostrophe mean? Yeah. Feet. So I've got... 136 feet to yards. What do I want? Yards. yards. So that goes on top. One yard over how many feet? Three feet. What cancels? The one always cancels. The feet cancels. So I'm left with 136, not times. The three is in the denominator. Divided by three. Everybody cool? I don't have my calculator out, so it's going to be uh, 3 goes into 13, 4 times, 16, 45, and one third left over. 45 and a third. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Now, what's a third of a yard? One foot. So it's 45 yards, one foot. You got no homework. I screwed up the Vernia Calpers. You're all off. Oh, it's a long weekend. Oh, I lie. You can't be off. Just do the next page. Try it. Okay, Up to thanks. number 16. You got four days off. You guys can try it. It's like eight questions. I lie. Ten questions wow. in four days. That's Are you going to give the outline? Oh, yeah. Oh, you don't need it. You don't need it. Oh, right. Yeah, here. Oh, and you'll need all the worksheets, too.
You won't, Michaela. You're going to be here.